always praise and say, say praise is what I do with it. It hits differently when you ain't always praise. When you ain't always worship, when you ain't always. So when you finally realize that you got something to praise about, sometimes you can find yourself in a place where you're giving God back to pray. Sometimes you got to pay with interest. And so God, because there were so many years and so many times where I should have prayed you, but I didn't pray you. I should have lifted my hand, but I didn't lift my hand, but I should have been. I didn't even pray with you. So God, pray.
Jesus. Experience our fair share 
of storms that we've experienced our fair shares of winters. But nothing came close to preparing us for what we experienced this past February. Freezing temperatures and freezing rain that turned to ice and snow. We expected maybe to be stuck in the house for two or three days, but we did not expect what happened. You see, I was expecting not to be able to move around because I've been through winter storms in Texas before. We don't know how to do winter storms. We ain't got sand trucks. We, we just sit down somewhere and we cancel school and we just can't move around. And so that's what I expected from this particular storm. But this storm was different. Because with this storm, not only did I not, not only did I lose my ability to move, but I lost. I lost power. And because power was lost, food started spoiling. Heaters wouldn't come on. People inevitably died. I had an expectation of what this storm would bring, and it was cool until I lost power. Stuck. I'm, I'm good at being stuck. I was prepared to be stuck. I've lived my life stuck. There's been a whole lot of seasons where I couldn't move. So I'm used to stuck. What I am not used to is being stuck, stagnant, frustrated, and with no power. How many of you? Know that you can think that you're safe in the house and still lose power. How, how many of you know that you can come in the house and think you're safe in the house and still lose power? Christians going back into to services in person, coming back in the house, safe in the house. Returning with no power. Jesus. In the house and broken. In, in the house and angry. In the house and suicidal. In the house and confused. In the house. I'm in the house. I'm in the house and I thought I'd be safe in the house, but I still have no power. So the question in front of us today is what do you do when they're in the house and you don't have no power? Mm -hmm. What do you do when you're in the house and you've lost all your strength? Text says that he gives power to those who have fainted and to those that have no might. He increases their strength. Gives them power to those that have fainted. Those with no might. He increases their strength. Um, that sounds good on paper. I'm, uh, I, I don't really watch UFC because I'm not going to pay for no fight. Right, right. Um, but I know what happens at UFC. And I, I have seen people knocked out and don't none of it look fun to me. Right. Um, I've never been knocked out. I, I, I've never had the privilege of having to wake up off of no canvas. Uh, but again, it don't look like something I'm missing. It is not on my budget. This is what I'm trying to say. And, uh, and, and so I was looking to see exactly what happens when somebody is knocked out. What happens when somebody Faint in the technical explanation. First of all, when you get knocked out, is your brain moves out of place. Again, I don't want to experience that. But when it comes to fainting, because fainting is a little different, and you don't got to get hit to faint. Right. <laughs> it says the common causes of fainting can include immense heat, extreme pain, severe distress, the sight of blood, somebody else is on your own. Anxiety or an inability to properly breathe. Yeah. I'm going to say that again for you. The text says he gives power to those catch it under immense heat, yes. enduring extreme pain, suffering from severe distress, right, right. Mm -hmm. looking at their blood or someone else's blood, right. dealing with anxiety or inability 
to properly breathe. In other words, you may not, you may be like me, you may not be like me, but my question is, God, why do I have to go through that? For you to give me some strength. Why do I have to go through this for you to increase my strength? Can we do something before it gets to? And so because I don't want to get to that place, because I don't want to faint, and because I am used to fighting, I keep swinging. Yeah. How many in the church today are used to swinging? Because if there's one thing that you will not accept, it's getting knocked out. You live in a house where your mama and your daddy said, I wish you would come in this house having been knocked out. You will go back outside and keep fighting, but you can't come in this house having been knocked out. And so because we are so strong, because we are so resilient, because we are so fortified, we refuse to allow ourselves to be knocked out and we refuse to faint. And so we get swinging all around not realizing that you're swinging against God. Uh, yes, God. Uh. It's, it's, in, it's in the Bible. Yeah, yeah. Acts Jacob in Genesis 32 where it says he fought a man that was an angel of the Lord. Right. Most I believe he was fighting against the theophany of Jesus in the Old Testament. He, he was fighting the person sent to bless him. Yes. Could, could it be that sometimes God will allow you a faith to get you to, to, to stop swinging? Because it wasn't until Jacob stopped swinging and started holding till he could ask him a question. Yes. Let me go. I'm not going to let you go. Catch, I'm not swinging no more. I'm just holding. And I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Sometimes you're fighting what you think is the enemy, but it's really God. Right. And some of you are so strong, you've been fighting your whole life, swinging your whole life, not even realizing that God is saying, I'm going to allow you to faint, not because I want you to lose consciousness, but because I want you to catch my grace. Yeah, not because I want you to hit the floor, but because I want to catch you before you do. Come on, and some of you are so strong. He gotta let you faint just to hold you. He gotta let you faint just to get close enough to hold you. He gotta let you faint just to get close enough to remind you of who you are. So God is saying, I know you're tired. I know you're tired of fighting. I know you're tired of swinging. But just stop swinging. Stop. Stop swinging long enough for me to tell you I can save you. Stop swinging long enough so I can redeem you. Stop swinging long enough so I can change your name. Because if I can change your name, I can change your future. Just stop swinging. I know you're angry. Stop swinging. I know you're hurt. Stop swinging. I know you're scared. Stop. Stop swinging. I know you don't know what's going to happen to your marriage. Stop swinging. I know you're concerned about your kids. Stop. Stop swinging. Because when you stop swinging, then he can hold you. Then he can remind you. Then he can redeem you. But you need to stop swinging. Here's the crazy thing that the text says that even the youth will get tired of swinging. That's what the text of the text says. That even youth shall faint. And be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. Mm -hmm. And I thought this was interesting because when we think of strength, when we think of vitality, we think of younger folk. And it's crazy because when you're young, and if you may not be able to experience it now, because our grandmamas is different ages now. <laughs> but back in the day, when you had them old seasoned grandmamas, <laughs> and you would come in the house from a from a long day of playing, you had no job, but a long day of playing at the park on the playground, getting up jumpers, you might come in and say, oh man, I'm tired. <laughs> it takes a real effort to tell you, boy, you ain't tired. <laughs> you ain't old enough to be tired. <laughs> you ain't even got no back. You ain't got no knees good yet. See, it takes a whole person to tell you, you ain't even got limbs that you know. What you mean, I ain't got no back then? I got what you mean, I ain't got no knees? But an old person tell you, you ain't, you ain't even old enough. To be tired. And yet the text says that even you will faint and be weary. I think it's interesting because we think of David. We go straight from David and Goliath to David the king. And we miss the fact that David in between was a fighter. That for much of his 
his life before he assumed that which was promised to him. He had to fight. And he had to run. And he had to fight. And he had to run. And he got to a point in the text after the life what he was most recognizable for and before his kingship, that which he was promised. Yeah. Says that he was over a group of men and the Amalekites came in and took all of their wives and all of their sons and all of their daughters and they came up and saw everybody gone. In 1 Samuel 30 and 4 says, David and his young men wept aloud until they didn't have strength to weep anymore. Young man, strong man, killed the life, knows the Lord, called by God, anointed with a purpose, and he fails and he cries till he ain't got no strength there. A young man, I know how to fight, but I got here late. Well, what do you do when you lose something that you weren't expecting to lose and you lose it in front of people yeah. who weren't expecting you to lose it and it impacts them the same way it impacts you. In other words, there are young folks under the sound of my voice that are afraid to say that they lost something because we as older folks say you ain't supposed to be losing it in the first place. That's right. How many people struggle with their identity because we tell them, are you supposed to know who you are? How? You 30 and 40, you still don't know who you are. How do you both know who they are 10 and 12 and 13 and 14? Struggling with loss of identity and don't have nobody to tell them. It's okay. And so they cry quiet tears, wishing and wondering, will somebody help me figure out how to get my strength back, my identity back, my hope back, my faith back? Because even you grow tired and weary. Looking at screens instead of being in school, they tired. Trying to deal with sexual orientation and not knowing who am I and who am I supposed to like, they tired. Oh yes, yes, yes. Going to parties where people say it's okay to drink, it's okay to smoke, they tired. Oh and you can get to the point where you lose something along the way that you didn't expect to lose. Mm -hmm. And so half of the battle of getting your strength back is just moving past the paralysis of being guilty of the fact that you lost it. To the young girl that lost her virginity, not knowing what it was going to be, it's okay. Jesus. And you're wondering, I know I can't get my virginity back, but how do I get me back? Yes. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Jesus, help. It's okay. It is okay. And I'm going to tell you why it's okay, because in verse 6, the text says that they had found strength in the Lord. He found strength in the Lord. He found strength in the Lord. How many of you know that God can restore your strength and you still suffer from lack of confidence? Because the text says even after he got his strength, he asked God, can I do it? Is it even worth me going after? I'm, a, I'm strengthened. So I know my strength in you, but I don't know my strength in me. God cannot do it. Your man that got a baby on the way that you don't know how to be a daddy because you ain't never had no daddy, and you wonder, can I do it? Can I do it? Is it worth it going back to school after I flunked out the first time? Can I? Can I do it? I fell virtual classes. Can I even go back in person and graduate? Can, can I do it? My mama ain't got no money. I can't afford to go to college. And I ain't good enough to get no scholarship, but I want to be better. Can, can I do it? Don't think that just because you old, you're the only one that gets tired. Even youth shall faint and grow weary. Young men will fall down exhausted. Can you help them find strength in the 
the Lord because they can only find what you help them look for. And if I'm too young to know where I'm supposed to look, it's so much possibility to help me find it. See, ye the Lord. I don't know where to go. So I can find myself in this place, in the house, thinking I'm safe, losing my strength, strength that I should have never lost in the first place. But something on the inside of me said, build up the courage to ask, can I get it back? And the text says, the way to get it back is to wait. Ooh. That ain't the answer that we, we expected to get here. Because we typically think of strength with training. If I want to get stronger, that means I gotta get, I gotta get in the gym, I gotta do some push-ups, I gotta do some sit-ups, I gotta, I gotta do something, I have to train to be better, I gotta put myself under resistance. But that's not what the, the text says. The text says, yes, yes. they that wait yes, on the Lord mm -hmm. shall renew their strength. See, here's the common misconception, though. See, we think that weight means to stand still. We think that weight means that God has put us on pause. We, we think that weight means inaction. Jesus. We think that weight means I'm not doing something because God is doing it. Mm -hmm. But, but, but in, in, you got to look at stuff in the original. See, in the, in the Hebrew, kaval means literally to wait with expectation. Yeah. To wait with hope. To wait while looking for it to the point where you can be confused as lingering. Let me make it plain for somebody. When, uh, when I cook from time to time, uh, my, my, my son will see me in the kitchen and he knows when it's dinner time. So he will come in and say, hey, what are we having to eat? And I'll tell him, sounds good, it smells good. Is it ready? And I'll tell him, no, it's not ready yet. It's almost ready. So just wait, and I will call you when it's ready. My son has seen me cooking. I'm in the kitchen. I got the ingredients. He knows it's on the way. And I tell him to wait, and this is what he does. Mm -hmm. And so some time will go by, and I will see my son. And I'll look up from the sofa, and I'll see my son. And he's around the corner to the point where when I say it's time to eat I didn't have to call him because he was already waiting there yeah. That's it. That's it. in other words he was lingering so I didn't have to call him because he was already in my presence yeah. you, you, you missed it he was waiting in such a way that I didn't have to raise my voice because he already knew that dinner was ready because he had an on it because he had an expectation for it and he was hoping for it. Okay, you, you missed let me let me put it. Could, could it be that while you were waiting for God to renew your strength, God is waiting for you to be able to renew your strength. Let me put it this way. You go to a restaurant, a good waiter meets you at your table ready to take your order. You look at the menu, by the time you look up, you got waters mm -hmm. on the table, maybe some lemon on the side. They offer to take your, to take your order and say, would you like an appetizer as well? By the time you look up from your conversation, you got an appetizer waiting. Thank you so much. You start to eat the appetizer and you look up. You didn't have to ask for a refill of water because they had already done it. By the time you look up because you had finished your appetizer, your food is coming out and they're saying, is there anything else I can offer you? By the time you look up and say, I need a refill of my drink, they're already pointing and saying, is there anything else that you need? Could it be that while you were waiting on God, he was waiting on you to see how you was going to wait on him? And God can't bless you the way that he wants you because you ain't worthy of a tip right now. I wish I had somebody that knew anything about hospitality to say that there is a way in which we wait on God where we know that when he created us, he said, in your mother's womb, I formed you. I knew you. I set apart. In other words, I put an order on your purpose. And now I'm waiting to see how 
when I think of how good you are and all that you, could it be that the reason why your strength is low because you don't know how to wait on nobody? Wow. All right. Mm. Jesus. Wait on no God and God is waiting, waiting on you. So he said, in order to get a good tip, you got to learn how to wait. Well, what is the tip? The tip is your strength. You see, sometimes you can have a certain tip in mind when you wait. Could it be that you're motivated more by the tip than by the service? See, I knew we would get quiet here because we don't want to say that we're serving God for the blessing instead of serving God for his identity. We, could, could, could it be that you that you a good waiter, but you got ill intentions? And so God gave you what you wanted, but he couldn't give you what you needed because that's not what you was waiting on. <laughs> How will you wait on God? And what are you waiting for? You ain't even worried about waiting on strength because you're trying to wait on a man. Now realize that if you wait on God and he gives you the strength, you can find a godly man. That's right, there it is. You waiting on a promotion, not realizing that God is waiting on you so he can make you a business owner. Come on. <laughs> waiting for all the wrong reasons. When you wait on the Lord, he can renew your strength. So you can mount up on wings as eagles so that you can run Jesus. and not get weary so you can walk and not faint. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Um, because I was thinking about this idea of just of having to wait and what that means and how hard that is, particularly when you are waiting in the presence of others. Hmm. So I often wonder why they, uh, they call Muhammad Ali the greatest. Because there's other boxers who are faster, other boxers who are stronger, other boxers with more wins, other boxers with less losses, some boxers that are undefeated. There, there's so many different boxers. And yet, when you ask a whole lot of people, who's the greatest boxer to ever lace them up? The answer that you are more likely to get is Muhammad Ali. So I was looking at his career, and then when he when he came on the scene as a young man, when he got his first title, he said, "I shocked the world because nobody thought he could do it." See, so when he got the title the first time, nobody thought, nobody believed. He believed, but nobody else believed. He had a strength and a belief and a confidence in himself that says, I don't care what you think because I'm a different kind of cat. And he showed that year after year, fight after fight, until he took on a fight that really wasn't really his and got locked up for doing the, the right thing. Yeah. Standing for the right thing and lost everything. Doing the right thing and lost everything. Yeah. Believing in what he was saying and doing with would make a difference in loss. Everything I wonder if anybody has ever Jesus. stood for, did, believe the right thing, and okay. still lost everything. And those who had called themselves experts thought that him being locked up was going to rob him of his prime and rob him of his power. And he gets out. And he gets a title shot against a man named George Foreman. And they said, you're not strong enough. You don't have the requisite power. There's no reason why you should even be in the ring with this guy. Nobody believes he can do it. Nobody believes he can reclaim that which he lost. And the whole time he's in the ring, it looks like he's losing. And people don't realize that every time he takes a bunch and he grabs, he's whispering in his ear, that's all you got, just wait. Huh. I heard you hit stronger than that, just wait. Hmm. I heard you had more than that, 
just wait. I thought I should be more afraid if you just wait. You didn't think I would still be standing? Just wait. And with every blow that had taken other people out, you were still standing. And after eight rounds of waiting, with strength that no one thought he had, he knocked out that which was supposed to knock him out and reclaim that which they said he would never get. So they call him the greatest, not because he didn't lose, but because he did lose and got back what others thought he would never get. Make it make sense, PJ, for the Bible, okay? There was a man who came from heaven, born of a virgin, lived as a carpenter, strong man, Jesus. built a follower, knew the word, proclaimed it proudly, come on, come on. had strength, had vitality, and he told his disciples, there's going to come a time where you think it's lost, but just wait. Ah. And so he goes to Calvary, and it looks like he's dead, and they put him in a tomb, and they put a stone in front of him, and they yeah. sat in that room and said, we thought he was the one, we thought it would be him, we thought we could trust him. All the while, they forgot that he said, just wait. Could it be that there's some people right now that haven't gotten their strength out because you forgot that God promised you just wait? Because in three days, he reclaimed everything they thought they took from him. He reclaimed everything that they thought that they had stolen from him. He reclaimed death that he had all power in his hands. There's somebody right now that is sounding my voice. The word for you today is just wait. 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 I know it's hard. Just wait. I know it's hard. Just wait. I know you're ready to give up, just wait. Because him saying that was more than just transcribing what would be promised, but it was a transfer of power. Because he said, I need you to wait on one that's coming. And when he comes, you're going to be filled with power, dunamis, power, dynamic power. But you got to go in, wait, I'm not going to look for me, but just Wait. Nothing that you gotta do. Just wait. Nothing that you gotta find. Just wait. Just wait. That's your proclamation for the day.
got so saved that we can't acknowledge that we're in the house and still hurt. In the house and losing hope. In, in the house and losing faith. In the house and wondering where you are. In the house and losing strength. Just wait. Have a blessed week. God bless you.